Hello, everyone, and welcome to Knowing ServiceNow. My name is Neil Laufenberg, and because I had a special request this week for some more advanced topics around knowledge, we're going to be calling this episode 6.1 as a follow-up to my initial episode 6 on knowledge. Um, today, I hope to talk about concepts around administration, configuration, um, the affected products feature that's in the tool, the most re recent tasks feature that's in the tool, and um, I'll talk about some importing strategies for getting knowledge into the system as well. So a few things to talk about around basic administration and knowledge. Let's go to the knowledge system here. And you'll see in the knowledge base section there's a lot of um, modules to, to link the various portions of the tool. There are built-in workflows. You can enable those and play with those and check out the wiki. Um, but out of box, it's a pretty basic workflow for dealing with knowledge. So let's say I create a new knowledge article and it gives me a KB. I put in some information and I'm just going to call it test KB1. And I will save that. Now, this KB is not yet available um, the way the system is configured by default because I don't allow the workflow portion to publish draft knowledge base articles. So this is where a knowledge base article will start. If you want to put a process around this, a simple process, you can just use the workflow drop down here to deal with that. So you can put it in a review status if you have a knowledge review team. You can publish it if you have uh, the knowledge is acceptable and you can retire it once it's no longer valid or needs an update or, or something like that. So in this case, I'm going to push it to published so it becomes available. And you'll note that the bu buttons change across the top. You'll note one here that is Mark Public. Now, the Mark Public button um, makes this available for all users in your system as opposed to users with a specific knowledge role. So that's good for things like um, help desk uh, knowledge that you want to share out to the company um, that you need to get out beyond your normal process licensed users. So that's some good information there. Um, Another thing that's at the bottom is this related list. And excuse me, I'm going to change to tab views, just for personal preference. Um, at the bottom here, you'll notice that the affected products tab is available. Now, the way this works is you can choose things that this article affects or is affected by or is caused by or is useful in solving. So let's say that this is around access. And I'll add access on here. So this is the affected products portion of the tool, which if you go view article, you should now see at the bottom that affected products is listed there. You can click that link and get a view of that specific product. Now, the way the system is getting configured, this can basically be any CI in the system. Um, so it can be software, or I shouldn't, shouldn't just say CI, it could be an asset. Um, it's basically anything based off of the root CMDB CI table. As you can see here, let's copy URL, and you can see this is pulling from CMDB CI software, in this case, software package. Okay. So that covers the affected product piece. You can put as many or as few things on there as you want. There is a configuration around how many it will show. I think the default is 10. It's adjustable. Obviously, deal with real estate space as makes sense. Um, so that's a useful feature. Another thing uh, I want to show you is when you are using a KB article, you can reference that in a ticket. So it begins to bring that information in to the KB article so you know that it's being used or who's using it. So. For instance, let's go into incident, and let me create a new incident, and I will save it, and give it a basic test note here. Now let's say that I was out and I wanted to uh, find a KB article for fixing whatever this issue is. So I'll search KB, and I'll pick my test KB1 article, and then I'll say attach to incident. And you'll note that that'll fill in a set of XML code, actually, excuse me, HTML code and, and uh, a code block in here that will um, reference this in the actual uh, update. So let me save that so you can see it. Beyond that, it also marks it as used for this incident. So now if I go back to this KB article, so I'll just grab the article number here, go to the KB, go into it, and you'll see at the bottom that the most recent used tasks filled in and brings in the number and the short description. Really useful way for giving direct feedback around where KBs are getting used and are useful in your environment. Um, as far as configuration of knowledge management goes, like I said before, um, it's pretty extensible however you want to use it, but out of the box it's a, a somewhat manual process. Um, so I think I'll leave that alone there. 
I think the last thing I will talk about for this episode um, is the concept of importing or creating KBs from other sources. So let me show you an example of that. Let me go back to knowledge here. And let's make a new article. And what I'll do is I have just a web page up, uh, specifically the ServiceNow Wiki on another browser. I've gone into that, I've selected all the content, I've done a simple copy, and what I will do is show you how you can very quickly bring knowledge in from an HTML source. All you have to do is drag it and drop it, and it will bring in that HTML source, including the images and links, into your KB. This is a great way to get a KB manually from one system to another. Preserves the links, preserves the images, great way to quickly build a knowledge base if you have something existing. Um, as far as bulk importing goes, the functionality is there um, through the standard data import processes, um, but you'll have to understand that you have to deal with things like images and where they're going to live, so it's a little more um, involved than I want to get into in an episode of, of Knowing Service Now, um, but the functionality is there and it can bring in raw HTML data on, on the import so it also can be very useful. Um, it does require some, uh, some tweaking and some knowledge though to make that happen. Um, if you have any questions that I've, uh, around knowledge or anything I might have missed, um, please let me know. I think some, those are some of the more uh, detailed features. If you have any suggestions for future, uh, future web episodes, please let me know. Give this a thumbs up if it was helpful. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more content, and I appreciate your time. Thanks.